Uh, I'm going to speak about uh, from a different perspective because I'm a clinician and I learn what is the best nutrition to have the longer life with the best quality of life and health. Uh, I'm going to talk very down to earth what are the trends that I learned from uh, from the research about nutrition so each and one of you will want to eat so you'll have a long life in the best health that you can. We have societies around the world where, uh, where we can learn from. Uh, these societies have the longest longevity with the best health. So this is one of the things I try to learn all the time and this is the uh, information I'm going to share with you in this so short uh, uh, presentation. But if you're tired of words, I just, you can just look at my tie and see what is the food for the future. <laughs> okay, how, okay. Uh, if when we talk about nutrition, the, f the first question is, how are we going to, uh, to eat in, uh, in terms of how much of our plate is gonna be from the animal kingdom and how much is gonna be from the vegetable kingdom? This is the first question. Uh, when I talk about food, that's what I want to discuss when I meet conventional uh, dietitian. By the way, the reason I think I was invited is because I represent a bit of uh, unconventional approach to nutrition. I'm not a regular dietitian, I, as, a, as you probably understand from the, what I said before. And, um, and my approach is not mainstream. So what I learn from what's going on around the world is that if we want to live longer in better health, we better eat less animal and anim animal products. It goes well with the things that were spoken about just before because uh, eating from the vegetable world is, takes much less resources from planet Earth. You, need, you can feed more people uh, a, on the same uh, amount of land, water, etc. when you feed them from vegetable uh, kingdom uh, and less from animal uh, products because animal products stay, stay, take much more resources to produce. Also eating more animals uh, increases morbidity and mortality from the ma major diseases and since the world is becoming older people will, have, will spend and will have more energy, time and money to invest in health. This is what I see in the clinic and when I teach all the time. So we'll eat more vegetable fruits, whole grains, because most of the cancer uh, fighting ingredients you'll find in vegetables. Some of them were described just before, but eating more vegetables and other sources of the vegetable world, uh, will, you, you will consume more cancer fighting ingredients and also protect you from other major diseases that inflict uh, Western c civilization, especially. We'll eat more legumes, legumes in English or pulses, uh, legumes in American, pulses in English. Uh, we'll replace the animal protein. It also goes well with shortage of food if we consume uh, uh, vegetable protein instead of animal protein. And another advantage is as you go lower on the food chain, you consume less toxins. It's not really organic, but it's more organic because regular vegetables contain only 1% the toxins that uh, uh, you consume when you eat the same amount of food from animals, because animals really get all their toxins from the, from the grains and whatever they eat, so you get it con concentrated. Fats. Uh, uh, there the will be an increase in omega-3 uh, consumption in food and supplements. Uh, the recommendation will not subside. I think this is not a passing fashion, the, the, the all, everything we hear and talk about omega-3 oils. Uh, omega-3 oils is part of, the, of our evolutionary diet and you will hear a lot in the future about the ratio between omega-6 and omega-3. It used to be one to one in our pristine or primal diet, a, a paleolithic nutrition, the nutrition be, before the, uh, the beginning of uh, civilization. Uh, and in places in the world where you have the longest longevity, people consume them as, uh, in a ratio of one to two or one to four. In Japan, for example, the Far East is a good example of, lo of the longest longevity in the world. Um, so the, you will hear a lot of talk about uh, the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 in different foods. 
Uh, of course, everybody will agree that will, uh, uh, people who want to live longer and healthier will consume less hydrogenated, partially hydrogenated, saturated, and commercial fats. Uh, and there will be more consumption of omega, uh, of foods containing omega-9, uh, which the, the best representative uh, and part of the famous Mediterranean diet is olive oil. The trends, um, as I said, the, the people who will be able to afford it will eat animals and their products who are eating more grass, which has omega-3, and less grains, uh, uh, which contain the omega-6, uh, less favorable uh, fats and oils. Uh, I think this is something we're going to hear about more in the future. Again, in cultures that can afford it. Uh, protein, as I said, more from, uh, from uh, vegetable uh, sources like legumes and less from animals and their products. And when we get to carbohydrates, uh, people will consume people who are wise and learn what we can learn from, uh, from what we know today. We'll consume more complex whole and coarse grains with low glycemic index, and that really coincides well with what was, uh, was what said in the beginning. Barley is the grain with the lowest glycemic index. So I think uh, people who will learn to consume barley and other grains with, with low glycemic index uh, will, have, uh, will be less fat, will see less diabeti diabetes, and also it has a correlation with cancer because as we eat foods, with high glycemic index like baguettes, you know, from, from re, uh, wheat flour, uh, we produce more insulin, in a, like insulin-like growth factor number one, and other materials which cause more cancer. So I appreciate your listening. Just, you know, sometimes something is just not right, says one um, hunter and gatherer to the other. Our air is clean, our water is pure, we all get plenty of exercise, everything we eat is organic and free range, and yet, Nobody lives past 30. So the lesson, I think, is to get the best of both worlds. We can learn from our primal diet, but also learn from societies that live the longest, and that's what I'm trying to do. Thank you so much.